Let your prospect family welcome to PTB 2022 for May the 23rd, 2022. Hope you're having a great week and good start to week on this Monday. Uh, welcome to the Crib Family Quarantine once again. Uh, and again, the advantage of being quarantined is I can put these nice, uh, cool little uh, background shots uh, for our uh, praying through the Bible. And uh, once again, uh, there's a reason for this one. Uh, this is uh, one of our texts is 1 John chapter 2. And uh, again, most scholars believe that John was writing from the city of Ephesus. And so you can see this is the major street going through the city and a uh, very typical Roman road uh, going through the city. And then I think that's the, the library in the back. Could be wrong on that. And then I think that probably uh, behind where, uh, if we look the other direction on this street, but I think that would go up to the amphitheater. I could be wrong on that as well. but. Um, and of course, we looked at amphitheater uh, yesterday. But one of the things that that is seen in First John, chapter two, especially, is that John uh, tackles the the worldliness uh, that no doubt surrounded those Ephesian Christians and uh, and really any anybody living in the ancient Greco Roman world. Uh, Ephesus was uh, known, of course, for the worship of Artemis. Uh, goddess of the hunt, but also of fertility. Uh, there was a very prominent brothel that they've actually found. I actually thought about putting that as a, uh, a background, but um, uh, it, you know, just regular stone building. Um, but it's, it was certainly a city that uh, was characterized by its worldliness. And, and so that puts into context some of the exhortations that we will actually pray through in just a moment. The other texts for today, by the way, are uh, Psalm 77, which is an individual lament, would be a great one to pray through as well. Uh, and then you have Isaiah 24, which is beginning a section in Isaiah called Isaiah's Little, Little Apocalypse, uh, which is a beautiful section of Isaiah. In fact, we might tomorrow pray through Isaiah 25, which is one of my favorite texts uh, in, that, in that section in, in the entire book of Isaiah. And then finally, uh, I believe it's Numbers 32 is our text as well. And that's uh, where you have Reuben and Gad uh, being talked about at the tribes of Reuben and Gad, as they, again, uh, Moses and the Israelites preparing to enter into the promised land. So that's kind of our introduction, but let's, let's jump on into 1 uh, John. And one of the things I love about 1 John 2 is it, it begins um, with some exhortations in, in a little bit, but it begins with a... Uh, a the, the address that he's writing to my little children, and that he gives some identifications of who Jesus is. And a great way to pray uh, in general is to is begin by just understanding who, who it is that you're addressing in prayer and confessing some of the characteristics, the person work of Christ uh, as you pray. And so that's what we'll do here in just a moment. So let's pray as we begin. Father, we're thankful for uh, the, the gifts that you've given us of prayer. We thank you that we can, as, a, as individuals and as a corporate body of Christ, uh, come before you uh, in our prayers. Uh, and we do so, Father, because we know we have an advocate. We have uh, one who is our, uh, who comes alongside of us, a paraclete, um, and that is Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And it's, uh, he's identified, Father, in this text as the righteous one, because it's not in our own righteousness that we come before you, but in the righteousness of Christ. And we just thank you for the work that he has given uh, on our behalf. And that work is, uh, is specifically seen in his propitiation for our sins. A big word, Father, but it means, of course, how he has paid that price um, and has propitiated uh, the righteous wrath of God uh, that was targeted towards us because of our sin, uh, and that wrath fell upon him instead. Uh, and Father, through him, we can become not just uh, uh, friends of God, uh, but be adopted into the family of God uh, through the work of Christ. Father, because of his work, uh, we know that uh, we have been changed. And Father, we pray that as a changed people, uh, will be those who seek to keep your commandments, but specifically keep the commandments of, of loving uh, each other and loving God. Uh, Father, we, if we know, we, we know if, we, if we do those things, then uh, 
then that pretty much summarizes everything that we ought to, to do. Forgive us for when we don't uh, love our brothers and sisters uh, in Christ uh, and even the, the, uh, our fellow uh, members of the human race as we should. Uh, but Father, most of all, forgive us when we don't love you as we should. Father, we pray that we would be those uh, who do not love uh, the world or the things in the world. Uh, may our love and our, um, our affection, but also our co covenant commitment be focused upon you and you alone, not on the things of this world. Uh, Father, how easily it is to get caught up in the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life. On a day-to-day -day basis, these things uh, are, are around us all the time, even as they were in ancient Ephesus. And Father, it's, it's uh, easy for those bright, shiny things to try to uh, attract our attention away from that which is truly bright, truly beautiful, truly good, truly true, and that is Jesus Christ himself. Father, we know that this world is passing away and also it's lost, but we pray, Father, that we would be those who find our satisfaction in that which lasts forever, and that is God. Uh, Father, we thank you for the promise that we have uh, of eternal life, the promise that we have uh, from Christ uh, that we will, uh, as those who, who persevere, we will be those who persevere until the end in Christ, for you have begun a good work in us, and we know that you will complete it on the day of Christ Jesus. So Father, we thank you for uh, the promises that we have in Christ. Help us this day to live in light of those promises. Father, may they, uh, the truth of your word, the truth of your promise infuse our heart and our life with hope. Uh, and may they affect the way we act and treat each other uh, and treat um, our fellow man. Father, we thank you for the time we've had in prayer. And we pray that you be glorified in our lives, even this day. And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Hope you have a great rest of the day and a great start to this week.